we're gonna look at three different replays at three different MMRs of people playing Void Spirit. This first one is Hurl 5, then we'll be looking at a Legend 1 player, and finally an Immortal Rank 1. So straight away here, the Void Spirit didn't go for the Bounty Rune because his support wasn't with him. Pretty good idea not to go there and die to first blood, but he does end up blocking his own creep wave, making it significantly harder for him to get last hits here. Even with the Quelling Blade, he's only managed to get one last hit out of these first four creeps. The other thing he never does is check items. So in this scenario, Lina has rushed no items. <laughs> no item rush. She ends up getting a bottle here. And now Void Spirit never saw any of that. So he ended up buying a stick. And this Lina's strategy is to pretty much harass every single time the lane and push the creep wave. This is something that you might not see very often because pushing your creep wave is often not the greatest strategy. But in this scenario, Void Spirit needs to kind of be careful not to keep getting hit by Lina's spell. So the Lina with this bottle build has ended up picking up a haste rune. And Void Spirit is able to farm in lane with no one else like dealing with him. And he even ends up missing this last hit here. It's a small thing, but like now he's like harassing Bristol. And Lina comes with the haste rune. It has a high potential of killing. And not checking people's items when they return to lane after a long time. Even just checking their mana pool would be a good idea. So in this case, Lina can end up getting a kill pretty easily. And she goes after Void Spirit's courier and actually ends up killing it. So now he doesn't have his items that he had on the courier, which were his boots of speed. So we see now Lina is going on to Void Spirit solo. They're both fighting each other and Lina misses one of her spells. He uses the stick charges. He doesn't use his bottle during that fight. You can use bottle charges in between the instances of damage. But here ends up Bristle coming to catch up the kill here. He pulls him with the taunt upwards. So really nice to get away here. And Bristle almost even getting a kill here onto him. <laughs> he was kind of a little bit too greedy there but he gets out. So Void Spirits hit level 6 here and he's pushing the creep wave and Lina is level 4. This is a time where you go play aggressive so he jumps on her and then he uses his jump afterwards and does a pretty simple little kill and it brings him up to level 7. So as well like Bristleback is kind of like leaving the lane and he's, I think he's gone top. <laughs> okay Bristle is top now. So this is where you need to go and actually push your tower, not sit AFK waiting here. I don't think he realizes, but this spot, the enemy can see you in the tower in the daytime. So you're not standing behind a tree. This like pole here is not uh, blocking vision of you. So now you end up having two squishy supports come into your lane. And this is a really good opportunity to go and get some more kills, especially seeing as Lena is under level. So this hero really wants to keep fighting over and over again. And especially when you had two points in Astral Step, you probably should have went and played aggressive. Now Lina has hit level 6, which has made it much harder to get these kills. Now when Troll comes, which I think is like a jungler or a mid player, and you end up getting a pretty straightforward kill here. Now Lina does have her ultimate, but with the silence and pretty good combo from the rest of your team, and putting it together. So now it's 16 minutes into the game and he's still pretty much sticking to his own lane. He hasn't tried to do any jungle camps. He hasn't really moved to any other lanes. He's very static onto the bottom lane. Now there ends up being a fight here onto Bristle. He jumps in on him and does some damage. He pretty much misses, I think, his astral step and his first spell as well. Now he jumps into Bristle a second time and he ends up backing off. So it's a pretty good idea to back off here, especially once you have six charges up onto quill spray but now he's going playing aggressive here this is over committing his position right now and you end up seeing that pa can come here no problem and he has no way to escape so he ends up just dying pretty easily here yeah he ends up dying so you really want to get out like and understand like oh, the other players are going to rotate when there's some sort of fight going on and sometimes moving to other places on the map rather than the bottom lane constantly is a good way to go and like get farm on this hero. So straight after dying here he ends up going mid trying to chase after a Rubik and he pretty much gets baited into this and he ends up jumping out and dying to a morph like after morph dies so it Kind of stupid play from Void Spirit there to jump in super aggressive like that. And you seen earlier that when his teammates were nearby, it was much easier for Void Spirit to get. So now Void Spirit's been gone on here and PA, they have no vision either, there's like no wards. So 
realistically you want to have much better items than this he's end up going for maelstrom which doesn't really make much sense this game and he's not farming very fast he literally farmed five creeps in his between his last three deaths which have been like consecutively in a row three deaths and he's only level 11. you really want to focus on getting very good experience on this hero because a lot of his like pretty much all of his spells as you level them up they do more damage so he sees PA top farming alone and he ends up chancing his luck to go in on this. So he jumps in on PA, he tries to disjoint the dagger and he goes back onto PA. Now PA is taunted, she's tanking the creep wave here as well and he ends up jumping out here. Now PA ends up dying and cool guys don't look at explosions, he's not even going back in. And that was a pretty nice little pick off but it would have been even easier if you had better levels over the PA. As we can see the PA is also pretty bad on levels as well. But this is a pretty good interaction to be having. And now he ends up getting kind of baited here by the bristleback. And he keeps coming in commission a little bit too hard. It was a very obvious bait and he could have backed out even earlier. Especially when you have your ultimate on Void Spirit. You can jump out and play it defensively and that's really why he needs to do a lot more. Now nearly 30 minutes into the game we have Void Spirit picking up his first neutral item. I think he forgot that they're even in the game. And Skyret doesn't have any neutral items equipped so I guess that's going to be a common occurrence with her <laughs> matches from now on. So he ends up getting bursted down here. And the reason why he gets bursted down so easily is not necessarily because of Lena having lots of items but it's just a really terrible position you can see how rubik and pa was able to wrap around there from the back as well just way too far up like there's no need to be there so now the radiant end up pushing two lanes at once and when bristleback comes they back off a little bit and then they end up going pushing again and the dire side has been very hesitant to defend this and it ends up kind of like confusing them or baffling them a little bit that two lanes can be pushed at the same time but Void Spirit doesn't really go for objectives at all, which is kind of weird, but the heat player ended up dying a huge amount, pretty much really stupid deaths for the past 20 minutes, and he probably spent more time dead than he was alive. This is a lot of the reason why his experience, his level is much lower than most of his other teammates, and also his last hit's been pretty abysmal for a so-called carry Void Spirit. So now we're looking at Legend 1 Void Spirit. So this time he's ended up going Buckler near the start of the game, which is a pretty good in when you're doing the interaction against Invoker. He's also playing it in a more optimal lane, which is mid lane. I tried finding matches that were in Hurled that would be in mid lane Void Spirit, but <laughs> literally played in every lane except mid in Hurled for whatever reason. So now notice his last hits when he's last seen under the tower. He ends up getting pretty much most of these here, which is really nice. And the big advantage of th this is that over, like, say, the Hurled player is that he's doing all of this without a Quelling Blade. So the last hitting is significantly improved, as we've seen jumping up to Legend. But placing down this Observer Ward, it'll probably get dewarded if the Invoker was checking his items during that. So the Void Spirit has a salve now and he ends up not really checking Invoker's items very often but Invoker in this case just has a shared tango. He uses his last shared tango and he doesn't have any other regen on him right now and his courier is actually going back to the fountain. I don't think Void Spirit knows that right now but what Void Spirit ends up doing is he trades Harass here with Invoker back and forth and ends up forcing the teleport in here from Pudge. Now Void Spirit exploits the fact that he has this salve and he heals back up to full health this is his chance to go back in all his spells are back off cooldown and he can jump in on invoker now he ends up going in playing aggressive here but pudge ends up coming he's quick to react to this and backs off however now pudge ends up catching him here with rot he gets hooked but if he didn't heal up with salve before going into that he would have definitely died in that situation now he does have his own regen again with the bottle keep going here and he is getting his last hits as well so he's keeping up the momentum and really continuously gaining xp in this lane just here now he's level six and he wants to go in and play aggressive straight off of this the creep wave isn't really pushing in to tank it and his shield ends up running out so now he takes a huge amount of damage from the tower as well as cold snap and he's pretty much low health here and now it's five minutes and 20 seconds so if we speed this up we see that he doesn't even end up getting any creeps in the lane because he can't really contest it. Invoker gets the last hit perfectly for nearly a whole minute and nothing really happened in this lane. Now Grimstroke is in this lane and Grimstroke ended up wasting this spell here, Inkswell. So if you had Inkswell with the jump in of the Void Spirit, you can very easily stun that Invoker. Then you get a kill there. But 
the coordination isn't as like a least level as that as you might expect it to be but this is just legend so kind of typical stuff now he ends up getting cold snapped and hit by the sunstrike and now void spirit getting now very good use of the fairy fire and switching the aggro on the tower here over onto grimstroke and void spirit still trying to stick around to use another astral step but he ended up using it defensively. Wow! This is something that Hurl players cannot even justifiably do. Like, he's just done it. The whole match, the previous guy didn't use his ulti defensively. Holy. Pudge here is aggressive on his own. Pretty simple kill, just following up with the rest of his teammates. And is he going to go for more here? He jumps in the astral step onto the high ground here. Ends up having a strategic play here as playing as an observer ward. He puts the salve down and he's timing himself with the line here. Oh, he jumps into the, <laughs> the tornado. But they still end up getting a kill here onto the invoker with the finger. Now, Void Spirit doesn't really have any way of killing Pudge here. He might as well just end up getting out, which is really the right decision to be making here. So when he's not getting runes, he's actually using clarities. And he's going on to this Slark here, chasing after him. And forcing the Slark to use his ultimate. And he teleports out. That's a really nice way not only to force out two ultimates there. But it brings a lot of distraction to that part of the map as well. Sometimes you'll even see people rotate and teleport to the outpost when you jump in like that. So it's a pretty good that he's at least making these types of plays. So he ends up going top to fight instead. Which, this is really the essence of the hero is to keep fighting. So he does an astral step here, jumping in onto silencer picking a hero off near the start of the fight very optimal thing to be doing get one hero out you get not only gold he misses the inkswell jump here with the second astral step and he understands that he's over committing he backs off now he frowns a little bit here and we have a taunt going in taunt to slark two taunts double taunt never knew that was even possible so now he's baiting out spells here the tornado emp missed by the invoker but now that void spirit has pretty much baited out those two spells we now know that invoker doesn't have much damage other than just right clicks because invoker is like level 11 now so void spirit can just start farming now the rest of his team is like following up and getting damage off of this so this is pretty much just being active in fights baiting out spells and the equivalent he's tanking but he's not taking the damage when he's tanking so he goes in on invoker here to start this fight and puck is in the back of the fight now he ends up clicking Yules onto Puck here for some reason and he can't use any of his other spells so he ends up just kind of being silent in this and this is actually a weak point of Void Spirits when he can't use any spells because he's casting them a lot. Now because he used his Yules on Puck this is often a point where you might want to back out but the silence that's built on top of this he ends up getting leashed and he can't jump away with his astral step until it's a little bit too late and this point he has urn on him and silencer can pick him off as well so he ends up seeing invoker here taking the bounty rune and invoker ends up going over to this camp and farming it which i guess he thinks that invoker is over here he guesses he finds invoker he gets tornado emp'd and he jumps away from the emp he brought a dust oh he dodges the hook as well really nice and now he's jumping out we have a ravage from lion Wow, that's just ends up working out as such a great initiation here. And he's still leashed here now. So, oh, and he taunts Pudge so that Pudge doesn't get his ultimate off. But now he gets stunned at the last second in Puck ult. And he's just about getting out here, is he? Yes, he gets out. And he still has his Yules. He's out at the edge of the fight ready to jump back in if he needs to and bottling up. This is really nice engagement here that's gone on so far. He Yules us himself and dodges the Puck silence and getting out so that was a really good engagement overall and now all he has to do is just get out here he doesn't have tp yet so overall like that was a really nice fight and like what he did in that fight it didn't turn out like the super most amazing best fight but mechanically much stronger than what you would end up seeing at hurled but the juggernauts with them so now he ends up using he ends up being able to dispel the global silence and he dodges a hook as well during the Yules. <laughs> oh, yes. And now he doesn't... Oh, he gets ulti by Pudge. Oh, like, so pretty nice. Like, his escape and his dodging of stuff has been pretty, like, amazing this game for what you would expect of a legend player. So now he ends up teleporting to this tower here and he jumps onto Slark who's pushing. And he ends up pretty much bursting Slark through his ultimate as well. 
So they're going for a smoke here. He jumps in on Pudge, so it's the Ewell's taunt combo. And then jumps out, so in case there's some sort of spell that comes in afterwards. And he also wouldn't have had his Ewell's to dispel something like a Global Silence if the Pudge was baiting. So he also puts the taunt into the Roche pit because it actually gives vision if someone is killing Roche at the same time. So this is where he starts to go on Invoker with the Hex and really nice like pick off here again so these are incredibly good ways of building up momentum for your team because the enemy team are not going to go play aggressive and go and try and find kills unless they're able to have like five heroes together so the void spirit is throwing off the enemy's tempo like massively so this is a really great space that he's making for his team and the stack is even forced to use bkb here and I think the Slack will just get out from this. Oh, he's still chasing. He's going to catch the Slack. Oh, the hook from Pudge. And he doesn't have any way to, like, stop these spells. So he went for kind of a greedy build where he went for, like, Spell Amp. And it would have been a better idea to get BKB because then he can go in not get contested here. Now, Pudge can ult him uh, through the BKB. But it's likely that someone might end up cancelling Pudge's dismember because his teammates are always nearby like Void Spirit's teammates and they have uh, Silence and Grimstroke and Stun from Line but they end up kind of just losing this game I think because they're just not very good at like fighting as five as a team and we have a nice stun that comes in here he gets hooked by Pudge he ends up yulesing himself and he tries to get away from Pudge and there really isn't any follow up here he even dodges the puck out I think so now we have Juggernaut going in just after respawning this Jugger and he ends up dying. So really this Void Spirit doesn't have a carry and it's up to him to try and like win most of this game. So like overall I think that this if this guy played like this every game like he would definitely be able to get to like Ancient. So now we're looking at a rank 1 Immortal Void Spirit. So he ends up using his Taunt here to try and get a last hit or like so that he can deny the Juggernaut when it comes to the range creep. He's doing pretty okay on last hits here as well. And he pulls his creeps under the tower. A lot of the reason why is because he wants his creep wave to push against Jugger. And Jugger doesn't have a really easy way of clearing creep waves unless he uses his spin. But that costs a lot of mana. So getting Jugger not to tank all of this is his optimal strategy here. So now the rune is after spawning on bottom. And Void Spirit ends up going for the rune here. And he still keeps commissioning for it. And he just about gets out here with the use of the fairy fire and he can bottle up now as well between the attacks of juggernaut but very close and he probably takes more damage than he's going to heal with the bottle so juggernaut now has low health we have a haste rune on void spirit and when juggernaut ends up taking damage here he ends up using his healing ward on the high ground and he knew from the animation from jugger what he was after doing he used his healing ward so that's a small thing, but it is uh, kind of predictable as well that Jugger might end up trying to heal himself. So it's good that he kills the... You get like a lot of gold for it now as well. So it's really worth doing that. So now he's also trying to pressure this Jugger. And he's also trying to push in the creep wave as fast as he can. So that he can hit level 6 like he just has now. So now he starts to try and trade with Jugger. He does a jump, but Jugger ends up spinning just at the right time. And he wasn't able to burst him. But it's really good that he's forcing out this spin on Juggernaut all the time. Because now Jugger's mana is at like almost zero. So he can't use any spells. And he's pretty much abandoned the lane and gone into the jungle. So now Void Spirit's got an Invis rune. And they've opted to swap lanes here at six minutes into the game. That once Void Spirit has his ultimate. He kind of just wants to go and get kills. But the best way of doing that in this scenario is to swap lanes with Slark. Who isn't getting very good last hits. He has 12 last hits as a carry. Not really the most optimal lane. So he ends up going for plays on bottom instead. And this is what kind of dictates the next like couple of minutes. So he goes in, bursts down the Enchantress with the Lich combo. So really well executed the two players together. And he ends up placing down an Observer and Sentry up here in the cliff. Which is just kind of to keep control of what's going on in this lane. So he's getting dived here by the Enchantress and Clockwork. Clockwork has hit level 6 here. And he is being cautious of that hook shot. So that's why he uses the second Astral Step to get away there. He's got Treads and a Null Talisman. Null Talisman not only is great stats. But it also gives you that Magic Amp as well. So going in here on Juggernaut. Using a magic spell burst damage while Lich has him feared. He can't spin during that time. Now he's diving in. And he pretty much gets a really easy kill here. 
and he even gets out here without getting silenced so he dodges the bloodseeker silence out of that and now he can keep running here and this what allows him to move bottom so this observer ward that the mid player placed he allows him to go and dive under the tower that he placed there a couple of minutes ago and allows him to go after clockwork here and now they're diving a little bit too deep here and they're probably going to end up getting punished here we have a juggernaut on the slash so after juggernaut cleared his creep wave he could very easily just rotate to this no problem so a uh, big over commit for like pretty much most of his team four out of five heroes dead not a very good trade so he's end up getting gone on by jugger here he ends up taunting the jugger while running away he never saw the jugger come on top of him pretty nice reaction there and we have a turnaround play here now jugger does have his omni slash but he ends up getting bursted down by the void spirit just before he ends up getting a chance to cast it so now the two heroes are being caught here and Void Spirit can just jump in. At this point with the Chrysalis he has a lot of damage and he can just burst people down quite easily. And this uh, broom handle benefits him a lot. Like this is plus 12 damage. So kind of RNG but it does help him massively. And if we have a look at the KDA here, he's at 10 kills and one dead. This is pretty much the evident thing where if we go back 10 minutes ago, he only had like, was it two kills or zero kills or something like that. So everything that's happened in the past 10 minutes is pretty much accumulation to him going to 10 and 1. Aether Remnant to be able to see into the Roche pit. Not only does this give vision of the heroes that are in the pit, but it also gives vision of the Roshan's health at the position that he's placing the Remnant. So he also has an Arcane Rune and his Solar Crest is ready here as well. When Slark goes in in front, which is tanking the spells, he gives him armor and Void Spirit because he doesn't have his own armor now for another couple of seconds he wants to play a little bit defensively there now he jumps through and does some damage here as well with his two ultimate charges and he knows that Bloodseeker is chasing after him here now so he puts a remnant behind him in case Bloodseeker keeps commissioning here just to hold Bloodseeker into position it might end up setting up a pounce or something but we have the BKB on Bloodseeker coming out the Void Spirit waits he ends up getting just pushed out of the silence here so He's pretty lucky there that he didn't get silenced that time but now his rest of his team is dead so he can't really do anything so he ends up getting an invis rune here he's looking for a kill so he waits on the high ground which they find bloodseeker which at this case is the highest net worth hero they end up taunting him which then follows into a pango stun and pango just follows on top of the this and really massive amounts of burst damage like almost instantly kills the bloodseeker took like 90 percent of his health just without him being even able to react there to that and now we have Void Spirit kind of getting caught here but he can use his Disalaminate or whatever it's called the second spell Disalaminate I don't even know how to pronounce this Disalaminate <laughs> <What? laughs> so the dire side was after pushing mid they took the tier 2 tower and instead the radiant side decided to go push top like the Void Spirit is here now we end up seeing the teleports coming in but the void spirit can't see this it's just because the replay so clockwork has teleported though and the void spirit ends up jumping out now clockwork ends up throwing out a hook shot here onto the void spirit which you can end up seeing here but wait watch what happens when void spirit put down the the remnant and it ends up pulling clockwork in so he couldn't actually hit the hook shot that's like insane I don't know if the Void Spirit knew that that was what was going to happen, but it kind of insane that interaction. We have Jugger who's after running up high ground here, and the Void Spirit jumps into the back line, catches the Enchantress. He ends up dodging the hook shot here again, yet he has his silence. He does have his BKB ready, so he didn't use the BKB at the very start. And Juggernaut is here. He's not disarmed, that's like a replay bug. But Jugger is going in, he's attacking. He's now taunted, pulled up onto the high ground. And Juggernaut's team are not really behind him, but Jug has spinned, and we have Rupture, which is after coming out onto Void Spirit. He tried to teleport there, but he got bashed first hit on from Bloodseeker. And even when he tries to jump with his ultimate, he does end up taking damage extra from the Rupture. So now the Void Spirit doesn't have buyback, it's looking pretty awful here. And we have them trying to defend the base. Oh, Pango with the four hero disarm. Bloodseeker ends up using his BKB. And we have Void Spirit manages to respawn here. The Omni Slash is going through. We have Void Spirit's BKB. He's disabled here by the Clockwork Hook. And Jugger is committing. Oh, he's spinning and teleporting away. They're getting out. And Void Spirit is chasing after him. They end up getting like pretty critical kills here. They're going to get four kills. 
Nice. There. Yeah, you're gonna catch this one. And that's f uh, pretty much a team wipe that almost like they lost the game. Like very close type game this is. So straight after that they end up taking Roche here and we have Cheese out onto the Void Spirit. And I think is it the Slark has ages. So going pushing here to tier 2. The Void Spirit is looking behind the tower to see if he can find someone. And I think there ends up being like an overcommit here. I was looking at this replay earlier. So now we have a hook shot in here from Clockwork. And Line blinks in. We have Juggernaut as well. So the Void Spirit jumps in. He hits his ultimate onto two heroes here the line gets bursted down almost at instantly at the start that is a pretty big hero to get bursted down early on and he ends up bkb in here now he does get hit by rupture and abyssal blade behind the blood seeker and he is stuck in this one spot and he is tanking a lot of the hits he ends up pretty much stalling now and goes on to the enchantress he ends up getting his third ultimate going off here and they pretty much end up winning this fight and as you can see they have no buyback so this means they can just run straight mid which is going to give them are they just going to go tier fours and finish yeah yeah so that is like literally how you, <laughs> this guy wins he's just got so many kills it, like very high impact very mechanically skilled as well and not giving up is a big part of the game so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. I also am streaming over on Twitch, so if you want to go follow me there, make sure you check that out too.